Create that life legacy designers, Amber Prosia here. Welcome to episode number 27 of the Parenting Biz Podcast, coming to you every Monday. We have our co-host Ava, the noisemaker Casey with us, so please be warned there may be a few additional commotions during today's show. However, we'll do our best to keep them as minimal with muting and editing, but remember this podcast is all about integrating business, personal, and family life together. So now let's chat with this week's featured guest, Vicki O'Connor. Vicki, are you ready to inspire us on your journey of how you crafted the life you've always wanted for yourself and your family? Yes, I sure am. Awesome. So glad to have you here. Vicki is on a mission to help women realize their worth, to honor and to love themselves, feel seen and be heard, feel supported by their sisterhood and bring about the change this world needs, one woman at a time through events and workshops. Vicki, please share with us a little glimpse of your own personal life and any, any gaps from that intro you'd like to add. Well, thank you for having me, Amber. This is a great um, opportunity for me. Um, I will preface it with saying I'm very new to this, and but I'm very excited. This message needs to get out. Um, I have, I suppose, in my growing up, I've been looking back, not anti-patriarchy, but I've seen, as even as a little girl, the anomalies in in women's and men's lives, and I've I've railed against it a lot um it's so it took me till I was 47 to realize that my path is via guidance from guides my guides um because I'm a spiritual person that I that they gave me a message to get out that that there's such an imbalance in the world um I I've just I'm looking back on my life I've noticed I've that's how I've my life is all the messages that have come through and the things I've got angry at and and it, it's caused me to write a workshop um, that I'm starting to get out there just to get the message across that we're not wrong just because we're, we're, we're born women. We are immensely powerful and we have an awful lot to give if we we're, are given the opportunity to give it. And we can see the problems in the world intuitively we know how to fix them but we're thwarted because we live in a patriarchal society and I'm not anti-men. I'm pro balance. That's that's my message. Yeah, beautiful. And I feel like a lot of men that might be listening as well don't realize that they have feminine energy too. So we both exactly. have the masculine and feminine mm. energy and we both need to rise that equally. Now for myself, just so mm. people are aware too, I was very masculine growing up and I'm just now learning to rise my feminine energy to match that masculine energy. Cause I don't want to shun it. And I love it. I love, you know, the termination and the drive and you know, all that good stuff that masculine energy provides, but I'm wanting to rise my, uh, rise my feminine energy to match that. So then it can be even stronger and more powerful as yeah. one. Yeah. So it's really exactly. important for male and females, even though I know this is really talked about sisterhood, but manhood have it too. And you do need to have feminine energy as a man. And that really makes you a, a true gentleman and a proper man in my mind. Exactly. It's, it's yeah. all about balance. It's not about one being better or lesser than the other. It, it's about balance. We all have qualities, ma- masculine and feminine qualities, and it's okay for men to show their feminine side and their feminine qualities. It's currently seen as a bad thing, but it is so not a bad thing. It is, it's, it's a great thing to be able to feel and care and love and cry. It's it's what we're about, but it's we, we have to get that balance. Absolutely. And I think that's good. Yeah, I think it goes great into the next analogy here because it's all about ownership and owning who you are. And that's who our listeners and our parents, like the listeners are parents or parents to be, that they realize ownership is key. And it's not only to our parenting or business, but in life in general. And along that parenting journey, we can lose sight of that. So, however, if we focus on life as a game or an activity or a sport, not only can we let go easier, but we can also gain strength from our mistakes and design our core focus we want of laughter, joy, and most importantly, having fun. Just like a five-year-old kid in the sandbox. So, exactly. Yeah. So, this week, we're going to design our entire interview around the sport tennis. Now, tennis can be played in doubles or singles, but this week, we're going to actually play in doubles. And as sisterhood or a team or even a relationship, it relies on two individuals becoming one. And we can all accomplish more if we work together. So let's put on our running shoes, grab our rackets, and get on the court for practice session called Learn to Be Unapologetically Awesome. And I got to pronounce that properly. Thanks. That's right. (laughs) 
hilarious. I couldn't say it beforehand, so that's great. So, guys, you're all aware this is just an analogy, and we can design our li design and create our lives any way we want. So, Vicky, this was your chosen sport, so let's get ourselves in the dressing room, go on the court, and let's get to ready for today's practice. Sure. Okay, cool. So let's go into the first element, which is serving. A tennis serve is a weapon only when the technique is correct. And when the serve technique is not correct, then the serve is often more a liability than an asset. Of course, there are many different serving techniques out there, but just like there is in coaching, what are some techniques that you would suggest for your clients, Vicki, that you may help them to stand out? Um, it's, it's my, uh, my main technique is to get them to realize that they're okay just as they are. It's not, um, any, it's not rocket science. We are, we okay just as we are. It, there's external pressures that we've, as a society, society have created that we feel we need to live up to. But we, and we buy into that and somehow we, we create ourselves in our minds as being wrong. We are not wrong in, in, any, in any way, shape or form. We are perfectly okay just the way we are. And I would, I, I speak about um, some, so, some scenarios that we have, you know, you're a mother, you, you're, you've got your daughter there. Um, but you are still a person, even though you are the mother daughter mother child bond is huge. You are still both individual people, and, and you, you can, can grow, grow together. It doesn't have to be a because you become a mother totally absorbed and become a slave to that role. You are still Amber. You are still an individual person who has needs and wants. Um, you don't. You, you have relationships. You don't have to become those relationships, and you can grow. I, I see. I see it as pillars standing side by side. Each pillar is individual, but their sides can touch and grow together. Um, that's that's what I would I would sort of do in counselling or coaching to help the, the person realise there's nothing wrong with them, and, and get that self acceptance, and let the, I do an exercise in the workshop. Um, where they visualised all the struggles and the hassles to get ready, you know, whatever they thought that day. Should I wear this? Who's, you know, should I wear that? Is this going to look okay? Is my hair okay? It's, it's irrelevant. It, it doesn't matter. If you let yourself off the hook and, and accept yourself how, how you are, you can let the sisterhood off the hook. And imagine what the world would be like if we all let ourselves and each other off the hook. That's... That's one of the one of the techniques that I have to create bigger change in the world because energetically that changes the woman and that flows on to energetically to globally really because we all it put energy into the universe. Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like you touched on a big element, which is one main drive of why I even started this podcast was because I feel a lot of women, especially, but when they become a mom, that they lose that identity like you talked about. And mm. you, yeah, you still have that. It doesn't have to be a mom. You know, it could be a father that comes in. They're like, oh, well, now I need to go provide and I have all I can do is work. You know, that's not. You still have your individual self. You're still X or still Y. And you're still a brother absolutely. and a sister and an aunt. And, you know, it all rolls off. But you don't have to be that identity. Yeah. You still need to own yeah. yourself. Yeah, I love that. That's right. Yeah. We are all individual people. But we get caught up in our um, either either um, implied obligations or very real obligations. And I'm not saying you negate your ob your um, obligations to little tiny people that you've brought into the world. But you can ask for help in that role. You can step back and say, "I can't do all this." It it is okay to ask for help. And and you know, can you please have this? have this baby for an hour I just need to go outside and breathe or we need to to realize that it's we can't pour from an empty cup we have to fill we have to have a full cup before we can pour from it because otherwise something gives and it's usually somebody's health yes. if you keep depleting what you have it is 
you can't give to someone if you don't have anything to give. You just can't. And as and, and parents do, mothers and fathers do do that. They they become absolutely depleted, and it breaks down families and people. Whereas if we learn to it, you know, acknowledge that it is okay to fill your cup. It is okay to do what you love to do. It can be five minutes a day. Just that tiny little bit of fuel can fill you up for the next few hours. But we need to take that time to do that. And, you know, I've, I'm a mother. I've got two adult children. And I wish I'd known this back then because I, I nearly collapsed with it. I, the whole childbirth and it's just a horrible memory to me. And I wish I'd known to fill myself up first because I then I have more to give but I depleted myself to the point of <clears throat> pardon me of having nothing left and and that affects everybody yeah absolutely and you know what though Vicky the fact that you've acknowledged it now that will help your kids when they become parents you know unfortunately it didn't uh. happen for yourself but at least you've still learned it now and you can at least pass that knowledge on to them because I feel like I'm so grateful that I actually have that awareness already because you know, uh. Ava's five weeks old now. Um, and I already had a breakdown at three weeks where I was like, Oh my God, this demanding, this neediness. I, you know, not that I can't do it. It was just more like, no, I need to nip this in the bud right now. What can I do? And literally my partner and I, we just kind of reassessed was like, okay, well, what do I need? And I was like, honestly, just a shower. I want to shave my legs. I haven't shaved them yes. in a week. You know, <laughs> I was like, these are really getting to me. So it was just waking up an hour early before Ava was up. Now, of course it's a day by day thing. Like we still aim for me to be up at four, but if she's up, and I'm feeding well then you know he gets his time and then when he's done his thing then I'll pass her off and you know he can settle her and so forth and, and, and it may not happen you know yesterday I didn't even get a shower until he came home after work do you know and that's okay it was just a day by day thing and um, I really do believe like how you said it affects everyone but I feel like this is going to affect her huge because she's going to see that uh, because I'm giving myself love that she'll learn how to give herself that love first before she can give it out to other people, you know? And I feel that's like really and, healthy. And, mm -hmm. and babies particularly are the biggest thing because they run, their communication is in it is energy. They read, and we all do it too. We all read each other's energy, whether we know we're doing it or not. But they pick up, you know, like when you hold a baby and – uh, or someone holds a baby and that person's nervous, the baby, the person doesn't have to say anything. The baby knows it's not safe in their arms because the person's nervous. Babies, Babies sense, um, sense that, that they're not, um, that person's not comfortable. So will therefore cry and the person thinks, oh, what have I done? But they haven't done anything. They're just uncomfortable holding that baby. Mm -hmm. Babies run that. And, and we forget that we run like that too as, as, as we um, grow up and, and become adults. We, we've, read energy all the time so we are actually and this is the core of what I'm trying to get across and this is you know I've only realized this in since in the last few years that the energy we put out into the world good good bad or indifferent everybody else feels it so we're actually obliged if you want to look at it that way to put out energy of happiness and joy and peace and laughter because if you know because you've filled your cup and your cup runneth over into the into the global you know to where we all live and we all function energetically which we you know not everybody's tuned in not everybody is aware of that but we are energetic beings and we what we put out there we everybody feels and feeds off so if you're putting out you know, happiness and joy, that flows onto the people around you. And and it's it, it's hard when you're bogged down in your life to put that out there. But if you just take half an hour to sit and have one full cup of tea, you know, right to the bottom, that, you know, good, I've done that. That's I've did one thing for myself, especially when you're, you know, you're in the, the family and little kids stage of your life. I've done that thing. And, and it just gives you that boost to go and do whatever you, else you need to do. And yes, by you taking self care, your daughter will feel that. Um, she won't obviously at five weeks won't necessarily see it, but she yes. will feel that. Mum's in a good place, so she'll be in a good place. And it's just a massive snowball roll on effect that 
that mum and dad are in a good place. There's, you know, there's not much going on here that I need to be worried about. She can get on with being a baby, a content little baby. And it really is all about the energy you put out there. And if you're comp constantly negating yourself, who you are, what you need, what, what you're about, that you're even an individual person, that also goes out into the, to those around you and they feel it. And if they're, they're depleted as well, people seize on that and can use you and abuse you. It's, it's all, all about the energy that, that's going on in, in and around you because we all feed off it. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, absolutely does. Um, but I want to just touch on, especially maybe there might be listeners that don't really know much about this energy communication that we're talking about and they're not really, you know, they're not aware of their own feminine and masculine energy. Could you just even touch down and just kind of simplify and explain to someone that might be a novice that just doesn't really know but is open to it and just kind of like, okay, well, what is it all about? How can, what is feminine energy? What's masculine energy? And why is it important? Well, as you said before, you you were masculine when you were growing up. So was I. I was a real tomboy. I had, you know, my mas masculine energy was uh, quite well developed, probably not so much feminine. We, we all have it within us. We all have testosterone. We all have estrogen and all the, the female hormones. We all have elements of, of masculine and feminine in us. And the, some of us, some more pronounced than others, but... Um, on my analogy in my workshop is to, to explain energy is when you and women are particularly good at this it's not shaming men it's just that because we're particularly good at mother's intuition sixth sense that sort of thing they're very real things and that is reading energy whether you see it that way or not that is what you're doing you're reading the energy and the analogy I use is if you walk into a room where there's been an argument you could have come in half an hour later and you can tell by the if the people are still there or even if they're not you can tell something's gone on in that room that's not pleasant you, most a lot of people can feel it it's the same as when um you have children and you just know that there's something wrong you know you don't see it you don't necessarily see it or um witness it but you know that there's something wrong you do we do that with our friends we know they could be come in say the same words every day will have the same smile on their face but intuitively you know that there's something wrong if there is we read it energetically because um that's just how we're we're wired and it, that's that's for someone who doesn't understand what i'm putting it putting out there basically that's how i would explain it in a practical sense is that you know if something is wrong with someone, whether they say it or not, because you act unconsciously you read their energy because you're in their vicinity. You can even know it if some people who are very in tuned, like twins. Twins know, you know, can be in different countries and they still have that energetic bond. It's that that very thing. That's the exact thing I'm trying to get across is that we have this energetic bonds with people and we can re we read it even if we're not in their you know physically touching them or near them it's that it's um it's as complex and as simple as that yeah brilliant that was a great explanation thanks so much um let's go into the next element vicky it's called drop shot and a drop shot in tennis is a soft shot that drops just over the net now sometimes we can feel like we just made it how do you break <laughs> down this how do you feel you break down this belief or would you break down this belief to make it more, you know, especially when we feel like it's not so positive, like we're like, oh, we just did it. Um, and we then begin to empower ourselves and look at it a bit more positively. Um, I feel like my time as a mother with young children, I just made it. I, the whole time I feel like I was just scraping by physically and mentally. Um, and I, yeah, I think that's my biggest drop shot is every day there would be something that I would just make, you know, I've just managed to get that done. Or, and that was my big word when they were, when they were little is just, oh, if I could just do this, if I could just do that. And um, I feel, yeah, that, that my drop shot analogy in life would be that I, I managed to get my kids through their childhood. They're now 26 and 27 and looking back, yeah, I don't think I did it as well as I could, but I didn't have it 
in me to give um, because of what I've, I said before. I don't, I didn't know, you know, then what I know now. And I feel like their whole childhood was a bit of a hit and miss kind of thing, although they are very well adjusted children, had a lot of love in their lives, but they're, I feel that the day-to-day -day things I could have done better had I known more and had um, more um, more to give, I suppose. Yeah, Vicky, I would say, to be honest, and, and I hope you don't mind me saying this either, I feel like you probably would have done, you've done the best you could have done at that time mm. with the knowledge that you had. Yep. And I feel like yep. even for myself, like one thing that I'm, because I obviously I'm not a perfect parent, nor will I ever be, and I'm not striving to be, but I know I'll be perfect for Ava. And I'll be perfect for yeah, her exactly. Yeah, at the yep. time that I am at that moment. And I'm just taking it day by day, you know? Absolutely. And yep. what I know right now, this is what I know, and this is the best that I'm going to do and, and yep. treat her. And then that could change five years from now, two months from now, you know, three oh, weeks absolutely. from now. But it's just yep. giving yourself that, you know, permission to take it day by day and not to beat yourself up. And you know what? No matter how your kids are, I'm sure they turned out great, you know? Like... They have such a resilient capacity and, you know, even if you were the best parent at every, they could still interpret it a whole other way, right? Because it's exactly. all our individual um, beliefs that we stir up and our meanings that we give things, even if it wasn't that intention. So I think that's pretty and, wonderful. And what, what is a perfect parent? We all, we all um, learn from our parents. And I was literally saying it just this morning to my niece, you can't teach what you don't know. You just can't. You don't. You don't know it. You don't. You can't teach it. So, it, it, what? One of the you know, empowerment messages to parents um, is to give yourself permission to do it right or do it wrong. But it. But um, just cut yourself the slack that you are doing the absolute best you can with the with the knowledge you have at the time. And the brain cells that you've got functioning at the time, that's my that's my biggest thing. If you, I was terribly, terribly sleep deprived. I couldn't walk through a doorway without banging into the, one of the sides for years. And um, I, my, I wasn't functioning on all my brain cells. And you can only you can only function on what you've got going in any given moment. And to beat yourself up about it, and I, Lord knows I have, but I, I understand now why, we... We, there's, there is no such thing as a perfect parent. You know, that A, it would keep the therapist out of a job and B, we we all come here to learn stuff. We all, we're all we all here on earth to learn um, big and little lessons and it, there's no point being here if we're all perfect. So we just, parents just, you know, need to do what they can with what they've got at the time and whatever society seems to project or, you know, say could, would or should, is irrelevant. You do what's right for you and your family at, at any given moment. Everything else is none of that is nobody else's business. Yeah, great. And you've kind of touched on this. I just don't know if there's anything else you'd like to add. But let's just say, what if the drop shot was actually purposely placed? Because <laughs> that could be an amazing oh. shot as well, right? Just over the net. And we were very skilled to do so at that moment. We wanted it to do. Um, how did you? How do you find beginning and strengthening our unapologetic? unapologetic selves to enhance that confidence in our lives within ourselves? Um, I think strengthening it, strengthening it comes from uh, accepting yourself in your warts and all, you know, I'm, I'm doing the best I can with what I've got right now and, and, and leaving it at that, not um, beating yourself up, as you said before, about uh, you know they, they they're not dressed in the latest thing I've you know I'm not dressed properly I, I haven't done this I haven't done that just letting just accepting yourself and and your life as it as it is and stop striving for some external um you know like we were my sister and I were talking about it just before she's staying with me at the minute that that expectation to get back to your pre-baby body why why should you what why you've just created, grown and birthed a human. Why should you then have to live up to some societal external um, expectation that you'll go back to some uh, fictitious body shape that, 
you know, the, 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 it's, the society places more emphasis on a woman's body shape than the fact that she's just created a human. And I find that quite incredible. I think just to strengthen ourselves and if we all did it collectively is acknowledge your wins. You know, yes, yes, I, I, I don't feel like I didn't do a fabulous job when my girls were little, but I did a great job as overall as a parent because they're functioning human beings who say things every, every you know, they don't live with me anymore, but it, when, I, when I see them, they say things about how they want to parent. And I think, well, we taught them that. That's a win. And acknowledging those wins and congratulating yourself for those wins, it's not, there's a difference between being a show-off and, a, and acknowledge, you know, acknowledging your wins. Nobody likes a show-off. But, you know, just acknowledge to yourself, I did that well. You know, I'm really proud of them. They're great kids. We, we did, we achieved something. You know, they're not a burden on society. And acknowledging strength comes from, you know, acknowledging your, your strengths and weaknesses and embracing them, both of them. You know, yeah, I'm not great at that, but I'm doing it. Or yes, I'm fabulous at that. And, and I, it's okay. I'm allowed to be fabulous at that. Building yourself up. If you're not getting it from your external environment, build yourself up and um, float your own boat. You know, there's nothing wrong with that because it makes you feel better. And you got, again, you've got more energy and more flow to give to the rest of your life. Yeah, absolutely. And honestly, it was funny that you brought up about the, the birth weight because I actually just made a post about that um, because I, I know you talked about the external that society puts on. I didn't have society. But what I actually was aware of was back in the day, I would have a lot of self-doubt of I'm not good enough that belief and I knew that coming into the pregnancy so obviously when I started gaining weight I had to have a whole different mind shift myself internally I was like no you know what I'm I'm creating another human being like you said you know and it's a whole different perspective and then before actually so I gained 20 kilos and uh, so for those who might be listening 40 pounds and then um before Ava was born, I had to also then change my mindset as well to not put the pressure on my own self to lose the weight so quickly and to get back to this body where it was, it wasn't, um, the pressure of going back to what I originally was, but it was accepting the changes that my body has just Uh gone through in the transformation. And then also allowing, you know what, it took nine months to put on this weight. It may take nine months to lose this weight. Now, I am happy to say, because, and I do feel this is a huge element of it, is because I took off that stress and off that worry and off that pressure, the weight has fallen off me. Now I only have five kilos to go, and literally that was that four-week mark, you know? So, yeah, and I think it's just embracing that and not allowing that to beat ourselves up, even if it's internal or external. Right, it's just well, actually embracing the changes and the transformation exactly. you're going through. Exactly, there's, yeah. there's three elements to what you just said. You created a human. That end of story, you know that that in itself is miraculous. It's it's just the most amazingly wonderful thing. That for that alone, you should be able to lie on the couch for the rest of your life and get foot rubs and cups of tea. <laughs> you know that's that's a miraculous thing. It's it's society just you know shuns it aside, but you created a human. That is a, I can't express how big that is in a, in the scheme of things. But also, the the expectation to lose body what you know, like pregnancy weight, is is an external thing because the people creating those supposed rules have a commercial vested interest in you do feeling bad because they make money out of the diet shakes the gym the the you know they it's all it's not about you know how, how the mental health of that person trying to lose the weight it's how much money can i get out of them by making how bad can i make them feel so that i can get their dollars that's essentially what it breaks down to there's there's nothing wrong with someone carrying a bit of weight. I know I get that there's health, there can be health issues, but um, if you if you've accepted, if you're trying to lose that last five kilos for you, absolutely fabulous. But if you're doing it because your friend's saying, "Gee, you've you know you've porked up, you've got a bit of you know baby weight," that's a different thing. It's you do it for yourself, not for anybody else or any external societal expectation everything you do do for yourself not for anybody else because you are an autonomous being and you deserve to have 
your live your life and do your life your way. That the the commercial um, industry about around weight loss and especially the pressure put on new mums is just horrendous. It really is. And I put on 20 kilos and I lost it pretty quickly because I was breastfeeding. Tw tw nearly 30 years later, I've put all that 20 back on. But that's okay. I'm, I'm okay with that. You know, I live in a country where I can go out for tea, where food's abundant. It's, it's you know, yes, I could lose it, but at the moment I'm not. But if I do do it, I do it for me, not because society tells me I'm overweight. Yeah, absolutely. And it has to be personal, right? Like that, I completely oh. agree with you on that. Um, let's move into our next element, which is called match results. Cause we've sure. kind of touched on it as well, but it's about winning or losing and how do we take it, right? So in doubles, you have to have to take the wins and the losses together as a team, which can be challenging in its own right. Because, you know, how would you recommend our listeners to still play full out, but live blame free, but celebrate the steps that they are making in life regardless of the outcome? Because I think a lot of people, we put that on, again, internal pressure or external pressure. But even as a team, we have to learn how to take the wins and the losses together. Excuse me. Um, it, yeah, it's um, it's not, as you say, it's not all about the winning. And, and I know it's, you know, it's, I don't know if it's Dr. Phil or whatever it is, but it's about the journey. You know, it, it's... Um, the, the losses teach you things, you know, where could I have done something differently? And I'm not going to say better because it's, it, 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 it is what it is, but where could I have done something differently? Is it, you know, is it a catastrophic loss? Is it going to change my life or is this just a little hiccup or a speed bump? What can I do different next time? Um, it's, it is, there's too much pressure on being, uh, uh, like what, what, um, success is defined as I even wrote a post the other day success is the people that are around you that you love who love you and you can call friends um what you've what you've how you you know regard your life that's that's success it's not um having the biggest and the best and the, the of everything that that's not in my book that's not success if you got your met palatial mansion and you're in there by yourself because nobody likes you that's not success to me um, it, it, I think you know, with the doubles analogy, I would sort of make it slightly bigger and that have the people around you, um, whether you win in, supposedly win in life or, or don't win in life in the little things, the things that you do and you measure yourself by, it's the support of the people around you puts it into perspective, whether it's, you know, hideous or, or just... Or, you know, that's, oh, well, that's a disappointment, but it's not going to change my life. Um, I hope that sort of answers your question. Yeah, so. it, it does definitely, Vicky. And to be honest, everyone has their own definition of success, right? So if it is ah. to be in a big mansion on your own or with your only like, a handful of loved ones, well, then so be it, right? To each ah. their own. So that's no problem. Let's move into the next ah. element called jam. And the jam is a term in tennis where you hit the ball near or at your opponent's body, causing an awkward or weak return. So this all comes down to focus, really, right? And, of course, anger management if you are trying to actually hit them. But that's a different thing, right? <laughs> how, would you, how would you suggest to alter one's focus? Because, again, that plays a huge part in um, embracing and also mastering our feminine and masculine energy. Um, I think, first, firstly, even acknowledging that, that there is... Um, masculine and feminine in everybody and in in, in the world that that's um that's a a big you know it, when that when you that occurs to you it, the different aspects of you become okay if instead of trying to fight the urge to be a tomboy that I was you know that that's okay um, I think um I think focus just focus on on self acceptance. Just I am okay. It's it's okay to be me. Yet yeah, maybe I can improve this, or maybe I can improve that. But you know, whoever, whatever your belief in in how who who created humans, they didn't get it wrong. They you're not wrong. You are perfectly okay, just as you are. And if you mess up today, and 
there's some consequences, then learn from that and don't do it again tomorrow. It's it's all all about the, the learning. It, it, the, um, stupidity is doing the same thing over and over again and not learning from it. But if you can, you know, you know, focus on the or look at the the things that are working and and keep doing them, and the things that aren't working not so much. You know, try something different or do something different. But my my main message would be just accept who you are, how you are, where you are, and um and it and then. That that alone changes your energetic makeup and give and, and helps you feel better um, to not be so down and judgy on yourself and then and on others as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's great. We're gonna to begin to wrap up the practice session. Is there anything you'd like to add before we wrap up and find out how people can work with you, Vicky? Um, I am starting out offering coaching. Um, on my website, which is um, in the, my second website is in progress, but it's um, sevenladiesempowerment.com. Um, I I would like to do. I would have some question, you know, some deep questions that I would ask people. Um, I will be absolutely transparent and honest. I'm very very new to this, um, but I am absolutely inspired um, to get the message out that. I feel has been divinely given to me by guides at usually at three o'clock in the morning um, to just get the, the message out that just accept yourself and 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 as you are and accept everybody else as, as they are. It's I was saying to someone the other day, I don't know what took you to get up, what it took for you to get out of bed this morning. You know, you may have, may have had a hideous night, bad news, horrible things happen or you may have had a fabulous you know night I, I don't know I don't know your life so it's not for me to judge how you should live your life or how you should be I need to let you myself off the hook and let you off the hook and if the sisterhood did that and you know again I'm not anti-men but I'm I am a woman I can't speak for men um if we let each other off the hook and support each other, I don't, you don't lose because I win and vice versa. Um, and that, that would be, I want to do that in coaching sessions. I'm also have just booked in my local area. I live in regional Victoria in Australia, um, two workshops that I have created and I want to take those as far and wide, as wide as I possibly can um, to get the message out and, obviously to do it face to face you get that connection with people so that that's my aim in the second half of my life to um i call it a um, empowerment road show and that's, that's what, I'm, what i'm about and what i'm creating it in the you know i've created most of it but that's what i'm about at the moment Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Vicky, for being on the show. And I love that name, The Empowerment Roadshow. I think that's great. <laughs> I think that's fantastic. Awesome. Yeah, definitely. Well, I'll add all those details into the show notes. Um, so everyone, if you guys want to catch on and go to a workshop, if you're in the internal Victoria or keep up to date with it or join her Facebook group, um, that would be great. I'll put it all into the show notes too for you. Is there anything else, Vicky, that you'd like to say or we're all good to wrap up? Yep. Well, I've just, I, I'm just—I'm not sure if I gave you my email, but it's sevenladies1 at outlook.com. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for having me. I'm—I was very nervous to do this, but I'm really glad I did. And um, I just ad admire you and think you're—it's fabulous that you can do this, live your life with a little baby on your knee. That—that's as I said before to you privately. That's the essence of an empowered woman it really is to you're not negating either side of your you know your you're not negating your mother role and you're not negating your business role or your need to be you know to do what you want to do you working them both together fabulously and I, I congratulate you for that that's really good thank you so much Vicky I really appreciate that that was really nice of you 
Well, I really appreciate you being so honest and open and sharing your message as well because I think that's huge. And it doesn't matter when you start your journey, as long as you start it and you just keep going. That's so, right. that's right. thank you for having me. No problem. Thanks so much for being on the show. And thank you so much, audience, for listening for today's episode. If you feel like anyone could benefit from today's episode, please share it as well. And if you're new listening to our show, we're on iTunes, Stitcher, Podbean, Spotify, and YouTube. Go check us out. Like, subscribe, follow, whatever you like and that would be fantastic so thanks so much guys we'll see you guys next week and have a phenomenal week until then take care bye bye